All right, so today's the day we finally gonna go ahead and get this thing started. So I'm not gonna do this thing all in one day kind of thing. Not even every day kind of thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and do one piece at a time. So right now I'm just pretty much gonna go ahead and jack up the car and pretty much get in the air. So we up in the air right now and got the hood open. Already went ahead and took out the oil filter. So that's how I knew that something's up with the rod bearings on this motor. So I might as well go take it out. So over here, let's see, it's the filter. You can already see some spackle of that gold or bronze looking metallic stuff. Person, if you look at it, you could see, you could see a little bit reflecting but pretty much that's what I gotta go ahead and the reason why I gotta pull the motor. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and, I don't know. I've never really taken a part of 535 before, much less a XI. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just take the bumper off, this whole piece off the radiator. So I pull the front. Got the top of this off right now and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this over to the side. Make a nice little pile. But this is where I ran the sensor right here for the coolant level. So this plugs up right here and just ran it all the way down to there to the coolant reservoir. Okay, so I just went ahead and took off this piece right here, those bolts. So this goes right over the condenser, radiator, and the fan. So yeah, anyways, this is not a DIY. I'm just pretty much documenting everything so that when I come back to reassemble, in case I forget anything, I know exactly where everything is supposed to go. So I got the bottom tray out first. Um, wasn't too bad, just a few screws and some zip ties, cause yeah, this one's a little bit beat, but Put this over to the side and we can go ahead and clean this up later. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this brace piece right here. That's the bunch of bolts running around the perimeter of it. So I'm gonna take those off and then I can finally go ahead and drain the oil. So it's not needed, but I just like to take this off just to get more visual and see everything. Right. Here it is out. And so go ahead and pull over to the side. Let's put it up on top like this. So I can go ahead and release the bolt now for the oil. All right, so since the oil is draining out now, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just take off these lines that are secured to the fan down here and to the uh, intercooler. So it's gonna come look good extremely different from any of the 535 since this is the lines that are rerouted for the what's that thing called the coolant reservoir okay it runs up to there so the line runs up there to it so everything had to be secured off to the side so to make sure there's proper uh coolant flow and then nothing gets hit or anything like that so so i'll cut these down and then pretty much put them back together and make sure i have it, everything routed pretty good so now at least now we know how the line should look so the coolant and the oil is drained out so now we can go ahead and work at the top and i was just going to go ahead and remove these bolts right here but then i realized i'm going to just remove this one bolt here it's like one right here take that out and pretty much this piece will be off and bolt hoses would be separate and i don't got to really mess with these but Sooner or later, I look like I'm after to get these replaced also because these are kind of like corroded. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that one bolt, uh, plug this out, and down there it's the wires, not the wires, but the hoses are loose off of it. So I should be able to just start to pull up as you can see right now. So it's just these lines right here holding it in. So this is the fan assembly along with the oil cooler and I'm like, wow, uh, the 5 Series shouldn't be complaining about oil temps or nothing. I'm like, what the heck? Like, you had these on like the regular 335s, like, this is an upgrade upgrade. Dang. 
But yeah, it's finally out. I did say I was gonna go ahead and pull this uh, bolt right here. It seemed like it would've been simpler, but I didn't have anything to go ahead and get to the bolts up here. So I said, screw it. And went ahead and just took the bolts off uh, right here. So those two. All right, so I went ahead and got this whole piece taken off for the bumper. So these are loose. Across. I got these loose also and also in the middle. Same thing on the other side also. So it's pulling out that bracket. And yeah, so all I gotta do now is just pull backwards and then it comes right off. Watch out for these plugs right here. I gotta disconnect that one. And there's another one right there, the temp sensor, and over there for the other fog light. So those are the only things that's keeping up the bumper onto the car right now. All right, with the bumper off now, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the radiator. This is a manual transmission, just that hose here, that hose here, and that's it. And just go ahead and just pull the radiator out. So that's one of the one things I love about manual cars. You know, gotta deal with it, all those extra hoses. The radiator out, and man, it's kind of small compared to the 335, but it's like a flat sheet of board. Well, yeah, that's it right there. I'm now gonna just go ahead and take off the charge pipe and unhook these vacuum lines. So pretty much the whole piece connecting to the intercooler down here, cause I'm gonna drop the intercooler. So I'm just gonna take all, loosen all these parts right here at the end of the intercooler and get the intercooler out and then take off this whole charge pipe section. So I got the intercooler and the charge pipe blow off valve. All that is disconnected now. So pretty much with that out the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking apart this whole cross member right here. But unlike the three series, it looks like I could go ahead and just take these four bolts here, or two, and another two here. And same thing here, and same thing here. So I think once I take that off, I'm able to go ahead and pull it out. Because it looks like this condenser sits inside a groove on itself. So you see all these on the five series, they come across right here. On three series, it's not like that. So I think I could just take those four bolts off and this whole piece will come off and just have this condenser right here just sitting here. And I don't have to touch the lights or anything like doing it on the three series. So I'm gonna try that. And if anything, I just go backwards and then I'm gonna have to go take off the lights. I think I could just do that and just go ahead and take that whole part off. So we'll see in a second. I took those two bolts, two down here and the other two on that side. And yeah, it moves, but it pretty much doesn't come off. So what I did was I'm just gonna go put these all back, these two bolts here, secure it back to the frame of the car. And I'm just going to take off these two screws. So once I realize it's coming two pieces, the top piece bracket here, and then it comes along off right here. So I'm gonna take these two bolts and then underneath it is a bolt holding it on. And yeah, you gotta hold the bottom bolt and turn the top. If you don't, then it's just gonna keep spinning. So I'm gonna take it off slowly to see if anything else needs to be taken off. I'm assuming these might could come in off the mount or something. But yeah, this is what the bolts look like. So these bolts at the bottom. So let's go right through and you loosen them. So here, this is where they at. Okay, so I took it off and yes, this will work because it comes all the way out and it just leaves this one little section here. So the motor, uh, the only motor amount of clearance I'm gonna have is up to here. So I don't really wanna take anything out after that. So by taking this piece out, I'll be able to have that room, this bar out the way and be able to take the motor out easily because I don't have much clearance in the garage and all that stuff to even do anything extra special in space. I just want the most space as possible to pull this motor out. So by just taking these bolts off, I'm able to pull, pull it out. And it seems all I gotta do is just unclip this sensor right here and leave that alone. And then come on this end, unclip here. That's removed also. And either unclip here off the reservoir and yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta do. And then this whole piece will just come off easily. All right, so I got that sensor taken off, uh, that sensor taken off the wire, and unclip this. So all it is is just a, a tab, like you pull up, and 
you pull up like those regular you can see it right here you just pull up and it comes right off the nipple or whatever and that's it you leave everything else alone so ignore even taking off those two bolts here two bolts here two bolts here two bolts here and just do that and you'll be good to go but i know i'm going to take this bolt here because it runs that way up to here down here and another one right there so that's the last set of bolts and once the condenser now out the way you have free access for the engine to come out and yep everything's good to go All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take off this part right here. So I took the bolts out that were sitting right here. So one here and then one over here. So once I took those out, this piece came loose. Like up in here, I just had to pull, pull out of here, this jacket. It's like an air duct or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, so air comes in it flows into the engine bay so it's like a little tab push down and you're able to pull it out you see i get out with one hand just one side all right so got it out now it was best to use two hands i didn't want to really like break it apart or anything like that but yeah there's little tabs right here if you can see and it could break apart and um it's not break apart but like disconnect easily in pieces so i just took it out in whole one whole chunk and let's have it over here in the pile. All right, so I'm gonna take out the condenser right now. So I already went ahead and loosened these two bolts right here. So I'll be able to pull these off and just pretty much pry out the condenser. So a bit of a problem. I can't seem to get these two pieces to separate. Like they stuck like heck. So I'm not gonna try to force anything cause I wanna break the lines it. Even though more than likely gonna be replacing the condenser also uh these lines might be changed up later on so what i'm gonna move on to is just go ahead and start taking the turbo side off and yeah so now we have to get more room for these other lines right here for the condenser so i want to disconnect those also but technically you don't have to but it's just for this particular build that i'm doing i just want to get that stuff all taken care of and moved out the way all right so this part has nothing to do with you guys so um so much i'm just gonna skim over this part so i'm just gonna go ahead and start taking this whole assembly apart up to like here so pretty much taking the turbo off and stuffing inside of the manifold so nothing gets into there so yeah so by the time the next clip all of this should be gone and out of the way all right so i got the turbo out the way and now i just gotta drop out the wastegate and good thing is all of this stuff held up i see no issues so far that i'd be concerned about uh if the car was still running like down here is like bone dry no oil leaks nothing of the sort nothing's leaking so it's pretty good or nothing shafted away uh yeah so let's gotta remove this bolt right here and unhinge the wastegate off the manifold all right so the wastegate's disconnected from the manifold so it's just to pull it out and I remember when I was installing it, I had to buy, pretty much put the manifold on, then the dump tube piece connection separately. So I'm gonna try to take it out all at once, but I think the reason why I couldn't do it all together before was because this was in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. This is being rerouted anyway, so I still have to disconnect this either way. So uh, your twin turbo setup, you don't have to even worry about not doing anything on this side right here. Most you have to do is just move the coolant reservoir out of the way and you should be able to have access to the mount screws but since i have all the stuff in the way now i have to go ahead and deal with all this stuff so uh yeah if anything you could always just skip ahead so i got this disconnected and lo and behold i could easily just pull out the wastegate now so now i could install and disinstall or uninstall the wastegate without having no issues or anything i could do it all in one piece before i had to go ahead and try to i had to put the wastegate on first here 
and then try to sneak my hand down here in the tightest of places and try to put the bolts on to connect the pipe and to the wastegate. So yeah, I'm so happy about that. This will be out the way. So everything is out now. So got a down pipe that came out from the bottom and everything looks good on it. Only have this like one piece right here. It looked like it was rubbing. So I rubbed through the thermal heat wrap. But that's the only sign of wear I see currently on the car. But we're not gonna be using this downpipe anymore on the rebuild. So yeah, at least now I know it looks like it's kind of tight over here in this spot. Right over here. So it looked like it was rubbing right on this part right here. So if anything, the manifold will have to get like a little bit dented in or on a custom downpipe, make it swoop more that way. So uh, that's pretty minor right there. But besides that, I didn't hear any clings or nothing like that. So, so far, can't really complain. So now that it's out the way, go ahead and see the nut so I could take off the engine mount. And then down here, I could go ahead and remove the axle. So this side should be free soon. But yeah, I still got to figure out this part right here because these two are stuck. Real stuck. I can't get them out. And yeah, I got to figure this part out. But we'll get it. All right, so now that I have all that stuff out of the way, and I can go ahead and disconnect this, uh, what was this, the thermostat? There's a hose that connects to it that will stay with the body. So I just pull the clip up or from here, and then you just pull back and take off this hose. So once that hose out the way, I believe that should be all the hoses that are still connected to the engine that will stay with the body. Uh, I gotta go check on the one that runs straight across at the bottom along the sub top of the subframe. I think I have to loosen those up too, but right now, since this is accessible, I'm just go ahead and do this one right now too. And it's disconnected now, so clipping that down and yeah, leave this to hang down a bit on the floor. All right, so I figured out how to get this off. The only way I've seen is I'm just using this long pry tool, the flathead or something, and it's like a little lip. So I'm just sticking it here and using the hammer and knocking the end of that, and it's like lifting it up. So replacing the condenser right here anyways, but yeah, that's the way I'm getting it off right now. Part I got to find a lip on this side and then with this out the way, it looked like I could get to this side right here. So start knocking here and it should pop right up. So I finally got both of these pieces off and yeah, this the back one was a pain in the butt to take off, but it came out. So now I can just go ahead and pull this bad boy out. So I'm gonna get a new, pretty much replace the condenser, and I'm gonna get some. Look about getting some new lines. So now this stays with the motor, and then this stays with the body of the car. So I just tuck this over to the left and leave this with the car. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out. With the intake manifold moved off to the side, I just popped it up this way. So right here, this black box, you need to take it off or it won't come out. So I just go ahead and use a rubber mallet and I just gently tap it down like that. So tap it about three times or less and it should just like slide right off. So like firm, but not too hard. Now that it's knocked off, I could go ahead and come up here and take off this connector right here on the throttle body. So it makes it a whole lot easier to access everything. So when I put it back on, just put this on first, knock this black piece back on, put it on, turn it back, orientate it, and it'll be a whole lot easier to get everything assembled the way it's supposed to be. So, right, so now that's all out of the way, I'm just gonna take off all these connectors that's supposed to stay with the engine or what's supposed to go over to the body. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect this connector right here. I think it started taking off the starter. Plug this out. And take these nuts off right here. All right, so I got the alternator piece taken off. So I just took that bolt off, took this piece, and then off this bracket. Gonna pop this out. 
I right, took this piece off the starter and I'm just gonna lay it so it's to the right. All right, so with those out the way, everything is staying with the engine or staying over here with the body. So this is disconnected, but since this is like a hard line, uh, I don't want to have it sitting there dangling. So I'm just gonna disconnect it from right here, unplug it. And I have to remember to plug this back in because on the three series, I don't remember ever seeing this so deep. All right, so I disconnected it, and you know what? I should have just left it with the intake manifold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it back where it's supposed to be. So that way I can remember that I have to route this to where it's supposed to be. All right, so just gonna go ahead and pop these tabs right here. Um, should be able to do it by hand. I'm gonna lift this up, and then the same thing happens over here too. So tab here, tab, break this tab off, and then over here there's a little tab you turn. You can start lifting this apart, like it breaks apart right here in the middle. All right, so see right here. Take this and you turn it. And you may be able to go ahead and um, get this loose enough to go ahead and lift up. So that's right after taking off this piece of tab right here. So pop that off and you're good to go. So once you get this out of the way, you're gonna see these tabs right here. That you loosen, same thing as turn them. And you do the same thing over on that side too. Loosen here or turned here and then pop that off and then now I just got to take off these clips so it's only this side to have the clips so let's take these off this one here be able to lift this up so now that the connectors are disconnected we could go ahead and pull these over to the side but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take this bolt off right here so one of them torque bits or whatever you want to call them uh, there's another one right here. I just took it out. So I'm gonna take the other one out and it should be loose. Nothing should be holding it in, but we'll see. With the bolts out and those things turned right here, you can go ahead and just lift this up. So it comes right here in the middle. Just so it pulls and just lift up right here and you see it start to come apart. It's all off right now. I just went ahead and put the bolts back in those two bolts right here so that I don't lose them so that's how it is right now it's clear so now we have access to ECU and all that but uh yeah this is it in its entirety and you can see right here it splits in two so it has this piece right here that goes inside of this part right here so technically you can slide this and take it off one section at a time but I just took it all in one big chunk so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these back together so everything is all in one place. I'm gonna go ahead and take this brace off. So this bolt right here, these two here, and then this one right here. So 
it don't look like it's gonna impede anything too much, but you never know once you're pulling the motor out. So I just wanna, it look like it might if I lift it. So I don't want this valve cover to get cracked or something get dangled or messed up. So I'm just gonna move it out the way. It's only on by a few bolts. So better be safe than sorry. So the brace is off now. Went ahead and put the bolts back in. So I like to just make sure I have these bolts in so I just don't lose them. So yeah, put this off into its own little corner. It should be good. Well, now we got access to the DME box and on the three series, it's just a little clips that would have been off, but we look like we gotta take off these little bolts right here around it. And let me move this uh y'all, y'all don't really have to deal with this, but right here is where the boost controller is tied in. So it's hanging out down here, so I'm gonna have to like pop it out and move it out of the way. So it's all that's where all the management is wired up at. So I'm gonna get this all detangled and yeah, get this all detangled. You can see the Mac blue solenoid. It runs under here and then runs down here, just tucked down in there so it never get like wet or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these bolts off and take this cover off. So I got the screws out and before you even take it off, what you gotta do is you gotta move this to the left. Once you move it to the left, you could easily just pop this whole thing off. And there we go. We got access to the DME area. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts back into their spots so I don't lose them. Or I might just sit there and put them on top of here. So this is the motive boost box. And I'm gonna have to disconnect it from here because this one is running right here to the boost solenoid where it ran. So I think it's running out to the inside of here into this harness. So I'm gonna have to disconnect this right here. So you, you don't gotta worry about that part. So this is disconnected and it's off to the side. So how this ran was from here, connects over here to the boost solenoid. So yeah, pretty simple, effective solution. Uh, I believe I'm just gonna go ahead and upgrade this because most of the support is going to the, what's it called, the reflex. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of new tuning tables and stuff like that. So I uh, get more um, features and stuff. So yeah, this will be mean upgraded. So this is one of the stuff. And I had the ground up here on this, right here, this bolt right here. So this is where the car grounds to already. So I just tapped into that. So yeah. So pretty much what I'm gonna go in here and do is take off these sliders. So pull that way and take them off. And there should be some other sub connectors on here. Every car is different that I've noticed. So some you gotta take off, some you don't have to, depending on if it's manual and automatic, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna take off what, take this harness off and take off the pieces. Cause the main point we're trying to get to is take these out and have them go over there with the motor. So this harness part right here on this side is gonna go with the motor. All right, so I got the harness out. So pretty much you just pull back on that and it pulls itself up and then you can just pull it off. Uh, it's two pieces. So that's the left side, that's the right side, and that's out the way. But it look like some of these parts I'm gonna have to break out of this connector, sub connector. And some of these right here, I must take this fuse piece off. That look like that's going with it. And I'll have to clip off some of these too. And that might go with it also. So, as I said, it might be different from your car, but you just gotta, these should be easy to come off. And just here on the sub connector side, you have to, right here, this black piece, squeeze those, and you should be able to slide it out. All right, so on this harness, I gotta go ahead and pull this piece right here. So just pull back, like quickly, but firmly, like just pull it real quick, and this will pop right off. And then you're gonna see like a tab right here. Let me pull this off real quick. Let me see if I put this down. Uh, I go... Like so. 
so. Let's pull this off. And my name is a jammer. But yeah, you see right here? You just use a flathead and push it that way and then pull the wire and this whole harness piece will come out. All right, so I just pulled right here up on that piece and you can see it slides right out. So now this part stays with the car and this part goes with the motor. So I think I got a few more places I gotta disconnect, but I gotta go double check. All right, so like after I reset the connector, everything is good. So I still got this one little piece right here. Like I gotta disconnect this. So just an easy connector, just lock it and pull up. But I also notice it like it's only these two harnesses I really gotta take off. This one is staying with the car. I believe this runs to the transmission. So I followed it runs all the way down there towards the transmission so if that's the case then I could go ahead and leave it but if not then I'm not to come back in here and disconnect it from the body but yeah it looks like everything is set it's gotta disconnect that one last piece right here and pull this off so I just had this up in here and I used this to like chisel right here you're gonna see some like some tangs with the hammer and I just knock and loosen them and then use this was this 36 mil and breaker bar along with uh the handlebar of the jack put a lot of leverage push down it's gonna take a while just put some pressure down like even pressure i did it slowly and all of a sudden it just cracked open so bam bam and it's off all right so once i had a nut off i just took it off and a little bit more exposed but i took one of these and i pretty much Put it against like this and then use the hammer and knock the end piece and pretty much pushed it all the way through so it's loose right now i could knock it and it'll be loose and then i just pull it out from the back all right so it's pushed in all the way so right now i can't really pull it out right now because i need a little bit more space so what i'm gonna go ahead and do is Remove this bolt. So I got my pry tool, not pry tool, but my channel lock right here. And I'm gonna use this, uh, I believe it's, uh, let me see. So I'm gonna use this 19 on here. I'll loosen this arm and drop it down. And I should have enough room to pull it this way and get it out. All right, so now I'm gonna take this arm off right here. You take it off from the top or the bottom uh using a 17 mil it's already loosened it up so it's loosened up and just knock it and then it comes right out of here and then we'll be loose and we could be able to pull this off to the side while this is cocked that way so with this arm out the way i just swung it down and pulled back on this and this fell like right out. So just pull it out and tuck it off to the side. So either could go from the top or the bottom. I'm gonna use a long pry bar and pretty much pull this out, the clip right here. It's like a clip on the left hand inside the piece right here that's locking it in. But some people yank on it. Some people use the pry tool and pull on it. So I'd rather just use a pry tool so yanking on it and mess around and break something. So I'm either go, I'm gonna try from the top, but I think you can go from the bottom. I'm gonna look on. I'm gonna do the top on this side and on the other side, I'm gonna try the bottom side. So I'm gonna do each way and see how I like it since my first time actually pulling this. So, all right, so this is the tool I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this part right here, this outside piece, not the inner, but the outside part. I don't wanna break this uh, clip gasket piece. So put it on here and I'm gonna use like a hammer or a mallet or whatever, something with some weight to push it, to hit the end of this right here and pretty much pull it that way. And there it is. And on like me, make sure you have something underneath to catch this stuff. But yeah, it's out. And I can just go ahead and just pull this axle all the way out. Let me try to stop this a little bit. Let me get something to clean this up so to catch some of this stuff. So yeah, so at least the driver's side is done. 
and I can move on to the passenger side. So got both axles out and yeah, everything came out pretty decently. The passenger side, it took a little finagling to get it out, but I did the same process as I did on this side. So yeah, same thing do on this side, do it on the other side and it'll come right out. So now that those is out the way, I could go ahead and start removing the bolts connecting to the transmission to the engine and get to the engine mount over there both sides and i believe there's a ground wire somewhere running around i'm gonna also take off the the drive belt and disconnect the power steering pump i'm gonna let it let, let it hang because i don't really want to mess with the fluid power steering fluid and stuff all right so right now i'm gonna take out the power steering pump this one right here so i'm gonna have to go take off this bracket and I'm gonna use this right here, T60, up in this spot right here. Turn it clockwise, counterclockwise, and um, loosen this uh, belt, take the belt off. So I'm gonna take a picture of the belt before I take it off, just to make sure I keep the same orientation. And yeah, then we start taking off the power steering pump right here. Since the belt is already off now, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these two bolts right here and right here on the front side with this uh, E12. And yeah, I'll take these off right now. With those loose now, we go behind the motor We're back here. And you see those two bolts right here. So this one and this one. So you can loosen these two right here. So I use the regular, what was it? E12 for the top one, and then use this 3 8 a 3 8 right here, um, right here, 3 8 to go ahead and loosen this one. I couldn't get a socket in here to get it close to, to loosen it, so let's use this 3 8 and the regular E12 to take this one off on a regular um, socket. See the power stand pump is loose now. So once the motor gets lifted out, it'll stay here in the engine bay. And that way I don't have to loosen none of the power stand flow or nothing. Those lines run into these stuff right here. So I put the bolts back in so I don't lose them. And yeah, now we can continue moving forward. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this uh, little shaft right here. So all I did was uh, disconnected this uh, the oil sensor, move it out of the way. And then I got this long piece of um, pry tool and I put it right up in here, like so. So it hits the um, ground. But what happens is, since you're gonna be loosening it, if you go like this and you turn, it's going to hold and wedge right here. So that's why I moved this wire out the way so it doesn't wedge against it. So once I do that, it'll turn and go like that and wedge right there then you could have enough leverage to take off these bolts so i already loosened them all up and that's how i did it and it worked out pretty well uh inside the car the car is in gear and the handbrake's up but it's still moving so uh more than likely there's some other better way of locking this in place but right now it's free moving so that's how the way I, that's the way i had to get it to get loose also, before I remove these bolts, I'm gonna go ahead and mark one of these bolts right here. So that way I know how to put this um, back together. So just gonna mark a line from here to here to make sure that we know that when we put this back together, this is gonna go back in the same exact spot. I don't think it's necessary, but it better be safe and sorry to put everything back the way it came. So that way, in case it was balanced or some weird thing like that, we're good. All right, so I marked it and I didn't really like how the mark came out. So I put some zip ties on the spots where it's supposed to be. So these are alignment marks I put. Just put zip ties right there and we're good to go. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and um, disconnect all these uh, the O2 sensors. It's pretty much taking them out the bracket. And as you can see over here, the exhaust system was already disconnected for the downpipe and all that stuff. Cause generally, if it was, uh, yours is pretty much connected because I was running an open dump. Uh, you could go ahead and disconnect these 
bolts right here for the exhaust and just have the exhaust hanging down and yeah i'm gonna bring all these o2 sensors and these cables and carry them up to the top so they'll be on top of the engine so i'm just gonna like disconnect these off these uh tabs and stuff like that so it's pretty easy to just pull them out like so and just bring them up all right so everything's clear on this side um so it's single turbo the downpipe would have ran here but i already took that off but if you saw twins you can have the downpipe just hanging down you just have to have the exhaust disconnected like so and yeah we're just gonna leave it like that the connectors are out the way and i went ahead and screwed the bolts back in for this flange and i put the one that's supposed to be for here and i just stuck it into where the zip tie is to keep it safe i'm gonna go back and tape it up so that it doesn't lose so that way i know we have everything secure and ready to put this back together. I'm gonna take the starter off in not the most traditional way in which I had to go ahead and knock this uh, clip off the starter. Cause apparently who put this back together before they put the old starter bolts back in for the casing and that bolt was stripped. So I had to go ahead and knock this piece off. And I pretty much used um, this along with this hammer and just chisel this piece off. So it's not really strong, like strong metal or nothing like that. So it can easily get chipped off. So broke it. And then now you can easily just pull the starter out. And as you can see right here, the bolt could just slide back like that. So that's the way I had to go ahead and get the starter out. All right, so I'm gonna go around and start taking off these bolts. And ironically, some of them are already missing already. So I guess whenever this transmission was off before, somebody just didn't put back in these bolts. But anywho, uh, I already loosened these two up here. And these two down here are missing. And I just gotta go up to here and just take all these bolts up over here. So I should already have the motor uh, braced up top. So what I'm gonna do is just take off all the bolts and just leave like maybe this one loosened and one on the other side loosened also just to make sure to keep everything still together a bit, just in case if it just like pull apart or something like that. I wanna come back and put like a jack underneath uh, the transmission. And so I just got this screw loose that was right up here and I loosened it by using this 11 millimeter right here. So that's the only thing I was able to get into this uh, location because as you can see, there's no way of getting anything really up towards this way. Unless if I use a bunch of extensions, but then the exhaust will be in the way. So this was pretty much easy for me. And I used another uh, wrench right here, put it in here to give me some leverage and got the bolt out. So pretty much all of these are loosened out except one at the bottom and i left those in just so in case the transmission split too much because right here you could tell the transmission split a little bit so just holding it in place until i'm able to get a jack underneath here and once i get a jack underneath here support it and i could go ahead and start taking the mounts off and take the water up so next part about to go take off the fuel connector so it's either you can take it off here or you can take it off down here. But I'm gonna take it off over here. Seems a little bit more easier. So we just gotta pull this tab off and then push the yellow piece in and it comes out. Cut the fuel line off. So we'll put some tape over it. But so far it wasn't too much leak or nothing like that. So one last thing, I forgot I didn't take off this evap thing. So Main thing to do is just check around and see if you got anything left left over. So I'm gonna take this piece off, which is just a push and pull up. And then down here, I got the this pole bracket right here. I'm gonna take off. So I have the hoist hooked up right here. So we're ready to almost pull it. So I just wanna pull out the, over here also, I need to go take off the engine mount bolt here too so here and the whole bracket over there and then in the back i have 
two transmission bolts still left in that left to make sure it doesn't split apart but i already took everything off apart earlier so i'm just going to tackle those real quick and then start pulling this back all right so i got the mount off everything's loosened transmission is off so i should be able to pull this up and be out All right, so hit a little slag. So right here on the power steering side, this piece, look like I just gotta hold, go ahead and um, take it off because it's getting in the way of the steering rack, that bolt right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to take that off and um, it should clear up enough room and should be able to pull it all the way out. Piece off. So a little mess, so I should be able to clear over the power steering rack piece right there. And a little bit of mess, but got it off. There's only four bolts in total. And there it goes. Normally if you're doing it, you might as well just drain out the fluid, but hey. Huh? So the dirt's in here. Oh yeah. And that's now it has clearance to go over the whole power steering rack and all that. So it should be good to go. And hopefully, time lapse again, this time it'll work. So with the motor out, it looks like he has a couple surprises. One of them, it looks like this is not the first uh, motor that was inside of this engine. It's an LKQ motor. So yeah, this is a, like its second or third motor, but I'm assuming it's the second, but that's definitely not the original motor. So I had a couple issues and one of the issues was when I was pulling out, I didn't take off the differential right here. So one of the steps was to make sure you take off the differential or you won't be able to get the engine to clear the power steering rack right here. Also, I made another mistake. I forgot to disconnect the ground. So it connects over here in the corner right here. So yeah, all I had to do was unscrew that. So. I'm going to go ahead and I have to get a new ground for it. But other than that, that's one of the issues that was keeping it from getting pulled out. So ground and disconnecting the diff. So disconnecting the diff, which was four bolts. So it's one, two, three, four down here. But other than that, it was a pretty decent removal. So I'm glad I was able to document it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date with updates and I'll see y'all in the next one.